This is part one of a series of videos on the Phoenix F256 and the 6809. In this video, I will talk about the boot environment. The Phoenix F256 is a series of retro computers. There is the F256K in a keyboard and resin case form factor and the F256 Junior in a mini ITX form factor. They both come with the 6502 installed but can be upgraded to the FNX 6809 which is a cycle accurate implementation of the Motorola 6809 microprocessor and an FPGA that runs at 6.29 MHz. And coming in the fall of 2024 is the F256K2 a new system which will hold the 6809 implementation in an onboard FPGA. This talk applies to all three machines. The motivation for having a boot environment is to provide functionality early in the F256's power cycle. When I got my system in 2022, my intention was to port the OS9 operating system and I needed some mechanism to boot into it. Before I get into the boot environment, I want to dive into the architecture of the FNX 6809 and how it starts up on the F256. The FNX 6809 is an implementation of the Motorola 6809 microprocessor. It has a nice complement of registers for an 8-bit CPU and a rich set of addressing modes for accessing data from the stack and heap. It also supports position-independent code and relative branching. So a program can be loaded and executed regardless of its location in memory. It's also ideal for running operating systems like OS 9 and Flex and programs compiled with programming language compilers like C and Pascal. The FNX 6809 has a 16-bit address space so it can see an entire 64K of memory at a time. At the very top of the 64K, are eight vectors. Each vector holds a 16-bit address. There are vectors for hardware and software interrupts as well as reset. When the F256 powers up or resets, the FNX 6809 fetches the 16-bit address inside the reset vector, places that address in the program counter, then starts executing instructions there. The F256 uses the upper 512 bytes of the 6809's address space to access memory mapped I.O. devices like a graphics, sound, serial ports, and the SD interface. Below those 512 bytes is a 256 byte page of memory that the F256 reserves for constant RAM. This is an area of RAM whose contents remain the same no matter how the memory map is organized. OS 9 Level 2 uses this area and I'll talk about its significance in another video. FU is the boot environment that I created to bring up a 6809 equipped F256. It stands for Phoenix Executive Utility or First Execution Unit. To pronounce it correctly, say the word foot without the T. FU is actually French for fire and ties nicely with the theme of the mythical tale of the phoenix rising from the ashes. FU starts just as soon as the 6809 fetches the address in the reset vector and performs several tasks. It brings up the F256 to a sane state on power-up or reset by setting up special address translation registers. It initializes the video hardware and the keyboard. Finally, Depending on configuration settings, it either boots directly into an operating system or presents an interactive menu. FU currently has the ability to boot OS 9 Level 1 and Level 2, but in theory could boot any other operating system that might be ported to the F256 in the future. And as we'll see shortly, FU is itself running under OS 9 in Flash. I want to spend just a bit of time talking about a feature of the F256 that overcomes the 6809's 64K address space limitation. 
To get around it, the F256 employs something called Dynamic Address Translation, or DAT. Each of the cells in the rectangles you see in beige are 8K blocks of RAM, flash, and cartridge memory. The DAT logic inside of the F256 allows any combination of these 8K blocks to be mapped into any of the 8K slots in the 64K address space that the 6809 sees on the right. At startup, special code located at FC00 sets up the DAT registers at FFA8 through FFAF with these values. Flash blocks 7D through 7F hex are mapped to the upper 24K of the 64K address space in slots 5 through 7, while RAM blocks 0, 3C, 3D, 3E, and 3F are mapped to the lower 40K slots 0 through 4. The upper 768 bytes of the address space reserved for memory mapped I.O. and constant RAM remain in place regardless of which 8K block is mapped in slot 7. Looking at the 64 8K blocks of flash for a moment, the last three blocks at 7D, 7E, and 7F in green contain the FU object code, while the five 8K blocks from 78 to 7C in orange contain a 40K flash disk image. This small disk image is formatted for OS9's RBF file manager and holds some extra command line utilities as well as startup scripts we'll see shortly. Let's dive deep into what happens when you power up or reset the F256 and FNX6809 with Foo. The 16-bit address at FFFE is fetched and inserted into the 6809's program counter. This address happens to be FC00, which holds the trampoline code. Trampoline is a tiny bit of 6809 object code that sets up the dynamic address translator with the values from FFA8 to FFAF that we saw in the earlier slide. Trampoline also performs some other hardware initialization, then jumps into the OS9 kernel's entry point at A011. When the kernel starts, it masks interrupts, creates its data structures in the lower RAM area, and locates any OS9 modules in the flash area from addresses A000 to FBFF. The kernel then opens the video terminal device and forks the initial process called SysGo. Let's see this in action. I'm going to power up my F256K. And when I powered it up, I didn't have anything in the cartridge or the SD card slot. So it came up into the full menu. I'm going to hit D for the debugger and we're going to explore some memory locations to confirm what I talked about in the previous slides. I'm going to start by looking at the DAT blocks in FFA8. And the way that you call up a value in memory is you type in a period in the debugger followed by the address. It shows that FFA8 contains 0, which is the 0 block for that first 8K of the 64K address space. And then I'm just going to press Enter to advance to the next several addresses. And you can see that the values in those addresses are congruent with what I had mentioned in the slides. And this is set up by the trampoline code. Now the trampoline code is at FC00 and FC00 is the address that is fetched by the CPU from flash as part of the reset vector. So let's take a look at the reset vector. In fact, let's take a look at all the 6809 vectors and I'll use the M command in the debugger and I'll type in the first address of the vector area and the last address. So at FFF0 is the 16 bytes of eight vectors, the last of those being the reset vector and you can see that it is set to FC00. And that is where the trampoline code is at. Let's take a look at the trampoline code at FC00. And as you can see, the first byte at FC00 is 1A followed by a 50. And those two bytes happen to be the 6809 address to mask interrupts. So that's the first thing that gets done once the 6809 starts executing instructions at this address. Followed by some additional instructions to set up the CPU, I'm sorry, to set up the, uh, the MMU 
and set up the hardware in the F-256 to a sane, a sane state. At this point, once this code is done, it's going to jump into the kernel, which is at address A000, as I mentioned in the previous slide. Let's take a look at the memory address at A000. The first two bytes are 87CD. That is the signature bytes that tell you that this is the start of an OS9 module. And the following two bytes are 8, I'm sorry, 0820. That is the size of the module. Following that are two bytes 000D, which point to the name of the module. And if you look at 000D bytes into the start of this uh, dump, you'll see that those bytes are F, I'm sorry, 4B72EE, which is KRN. The last byte EE is actually an N with the high bit set. Following the 000D bytes are some other important bytes, and we get eventually to offset 09, A009. And the two bytes there are 0011, and that is the first instruction in this module. So if you look at A011, you'll see that the first byte is 1A, followed by a 50, which again is the kernel masking interrupts. That's the first thing that it does. And then the, this code following that sets everything up to get OS9 level one running on the F256. When Cisco starts, it attempts to change directories on three devices. First, it tries to change into the food directory on the cartridge. If that fails, it tries to change into the food directory of the SD card. And if that fails, it tries to change into the food directory of the flash drive. That always works because the disk image residing in flash blocks 78 to 7C that we saw earlier in the slide are always there. However, if that area wasn't flashed, foo just forks a shell. I'm going to reset the F256K and go back to the menu. And I want to show you some things about OS 9 specifically that are critical to help you with the understanding of what's going on behind the scenes here. Now, I mentioned previously that when I started up this F256K, I didn't have a cartridge slot uh, filled or didn't have anything in the SD card slot. And it came up to this menu. So let's actually investigate and peek into how things are working behind the scenes here. I'm going to hit S to go into the OS 9 shell because, again, we're actually running OS 9 in Flash. And I'm going to type the command mdir. That's going to show me the modules that are in memory. And you'll notice that Cisco is on line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's in the fourth column. And that is the first process that is forked. I'm going to type the prox command. And that actually shows a number of different processes running. And you'll notice that the process with the lowest ID, ID1, is Cisco. That was the first program that was, uh, that was forked. I'm going to exit out of the shell and get back to the full menu by typing EX. And I want to just quickly go over the OS9 boot process. If I hit O, I'm presented with another menu and I can boot OS9 from cartridge, SD card, or drive wire. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to hit Q to return back to the upper menu. And I'm going to go back into the shell again. And then I'm going to type the mdir command again. And you'll notice that there is a command called boot OS9 and a command called pick. Well, the way that it works is that if I look at my current directory, I'm on the flash drive slash F0, and I'm in the fu directory. And when I type dir, I see three files there. Boot.pick, main.pick, and startup. Startup is the script file that Cisco looks for and tries to execute the commands in. I'm going to use the list command in OS9, which is a way to look at text files. And I'm going to list the contents of startup. You'll notice that when I do that, startup shows the display command, which shows a bunch of hexadecimal values that sets up some colors on the screen, followed by 
some echo commands and an fnx info command and then a chd command and then this pick command so this startup script is what is executed by cisco whenever you turn on the f256k uh, for instance if i type the command fnx info right now you'll see information about this machine and that is what we saw when i hit the reset button and for started so you see actually the echoes of the two lines and the fnx info and the pick command is a command that parses pick files and pick files are simply files that describe how to respond to keystrokes so if i list main.pick here you'll notice that you'll see the menu that was there earlier where I had boot OS 9, go to the debugger, launch the shell or reset. And each of those keys are followed by a message and then those messages are followed by the commands to run when that key is hit. The cartridge port on the F256 is device C0 under OS 9. It can either contain 512K of flash or static RAM and is ideal for distributing software like games. Since it's the first device that Cisco checks for the existence of the FU startup script, it takes precedence over other devices on the system at boot time. As an example of the flexibility of FU scripting, you could have this single line in the startup file on the cartridge's FU directory along with an OS 9 level 2 boot file in any game or program you'd want to auto start. The SD card on the F-256 is device S0 under OS 9. SD cards provide copious amounts of storage and can be partitioned under OS 9. And for normal use, it's going to be the most common storage method. There's also the X0 device under OS 9 which can access drive wire disk images. This is a convenient serial based method of storage and requires a drive wire server to be running and connected to the F256 over its 9-pin serial port. Cisco does not attempt to locate the startup file on a drive wire disk, but you can access the device from the shell if you would like to. In summary, Fu is a script-driven booter environment that resides in Flash. It currently boots OS 9 Level 1 and Level 2 from cartridge or SD card and can be configured with startup and pick scripts, and it actually is running OS 9 Level 1 under the hood.